congratulations, you made it. Welcome to the first ever episode of Ninja Fit, where I, Scorpion, am gonna teach you how to get strong enough to beat up everybody that leaves a negative comment on your channel. I'm gonna teach you how to get beefy, thick, rotund, moist. Well, I'm gonna teach you how to turn your chest into a musical instrument. So since we're doing chest, we're gonna warm up the muscle groups that have associations with chest, okay? Our chest, our shoulders, and our triceps. Upper bicep, back, all of these things are in there. Now my personal favorite is the leaning forward push-up. These are a lot harder than they look and they have great carry over and functional strength. Okay, what you wanna do is you wanna get your hands close to your torso here and you wanna lean completely forward, okay? Now the objective here is to come all the way back up without leaning backward, okay? Let's try a few. Oh! Ugh. Now it's true, you get much more big if you moan while you do it. Now in general, I like to do just enough to be warmed up and get a light sweat going. Most days, I'll do about five minutes on the treadmill, about 60 to 80% of my maximum heart rate until I get a good sweat going. And then I'll come here and I'll do a few of these. Now my body's engaged. Let's rock. All right, so now that we got our light sweat going, it's time to move some iron like a pissed off 1940s union worker. Now one of my favorite techniques is something called pre-exhaustion. And what's it mean? Exactly that. <clears throat> we're gonna take some light weight and we're gonna do some flies. Because if you're like me, when you hit your chest, sometimes your shoulders and triceps are stronger than your chest and they overcompensate and your chest doesn't even get worked out at all. But we're here to optimize our gains. So we're gonna grab some light weight. Oh, crack my knee open. I like to use 15s to 20, just because I know, and I've been working out for a while, I know my body. Okay, so let's go back and let's do about three to 10 sets with about 45 seconds of rest. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay, now when we think about the form here, it's important not to go too low. You don't wanna be up here, okay? You'll know it, your body will tell you when you're in pain. And don't push it, don't try to be a hero, okay? Also, you wanna pinch your shoulder blades together, elevating your chest, so it should look something like this. Okay, and then we come back down, we don't go too far, and we come back up. If I touch the weights together, the weights rest on each other and we're removing tension from the movement. So try not to touch them. You wanna go back here just like this, and bring them up, a nice little squeeze in there. Also, keep a slight bend in your elbow. You don't wanna be like this. Extending and locking out your joints, never a good idea. Generally, when you're doing lighter weight, you wanna keep the rest time short because your body doesn't need that much time to recover and also, it burns more fat with shorter rest time. When you do higher weight, you want a longer rest time so your body has more time to recover. There's a whole bunch of scientific stuff related like ATP and all that kind of stuff, ATF. ATM. So now we're gonna move to a little bit of a heavier weight and we're gonna do some incline chest press. Let's hit four sets of five to eight and then another two sets of 15 to 20. Those last two sets are gonna burn fat and hit our endurance and the heavier weight is gonna go to build muscle and increase our resting metabolic rate, which means at rest you burn more fat. Oh, you're wondering what angle the bench should be? Well, that's a good question, considering that we're all born with different genetics and different body types for what works. That's the thing about genetics. There's no silver bullet or magic potion that's gonna work for everybody. Everybody is different. Their bodies are different. Some people are born to get hit by a car when they're crossing the street. Other people are born looking like sacks of ass. But me personally, this angle is pretty good, about two notches up. Okay, now, remember our form from last time, we're gonna pinch our shoulder blades, and when we're getting this weight back, we don't wanna strictly use our arms because we can get hurt that way. We wanna kick it up with our knees and use the momentum of falling back to get them up, like so. You can do one or both at the same time. I like to do one or both, <clears throat> okay? Yeah, and then we lift. And we're gonna bring it down. We're gonna press. <clears throat> we're gonna bring it down. I'm gonna press. I'm gonna bring it down. 
and we're gonna press. Keeping our shoulder blades tight, our chest arched, not bringing it back too low, and not locking out at the top. We're keeping constant tension on the muscle. Uh, we're gonna go for eight. We could do more, but we're gonna do eight. Uh. Now some people opt to put their feet on the bench to take away the stability of their legs. I'm on the fence about this one, but generally sometimes I like to do it. It's always good to switch it up and try new things. Also, breathing. First time lifters always get breathing wrong. It's inhale on the way down and exhale on the way up. Okay, bozos, now that our heavy sets are done, let's do our endurance sets. Obviously, you wanna drop the weight. Make sure you experiment and figure out what kind of weight you're comfortable with. I'm gonna go down to 25, which is about little, 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 I don't know. It's like 30 pounds less. I don't know the percentage. I was never good at math. Ugh. So let's go 15 to 20, okay? And in these sets, our rest between sets are gonna be much lower. We're looking to burn fat. Ugh. Proper form, but do them explosively. Now our next exercise is gonna be something called the floor press, which is named conveniently because you're going to let your shoulders rest on the floor before contracting again or pushing the weight upwards. This is gonna train our explosiveness, which has great carryover for real life. It's not all about being a beef bus. You want to be functional. Uh. Uh. So right now, we are in a resting position, okay? More advanced people can add a bridge into the movement to make it a full body movement, but sometimes it's difficult to time. So in general, we'll just keep it simple. So now we're in a resting position and we are going to explode. We're going to bring it back down, rest it, and we are going to explode. We're gonna bring it back down, rest it, and we are going to explode. Bring it down, rest it, and explode. Bring it down. Now let's try adding a bridge in there. Now in terms of reps, this is an explosive movement that's pretty demanding. We're gonna wanna go for strength so we're keeping the reps low and the weight moderately heavy. Not too heavy though, you don't wanna drop it on your face. Now those are two pretty basic pressing movements. We're gonna go back to flies now that we've got that out of the way, and we're gonna do about 12 to 15 reps with a heavier weight. Ugh. Rock. Yeah. Open the chest. Close the chest. Open the chest. Close the chest. Open the chest. Once we've gotten the treasure, we close the chest. Yeah, that was a little play on words. Now 10 sets is a decent amount of work for a quick little workout. As long as you keep things intense and you stay focused on the movements. So now let's go over some troubleshooting and for those of you at home that can't get to a gym or maybe have some strength imbalances, how we can build them and get you into a jacked beast. Now one of my favorite finishers is just your traditional push-ups, Done for about three sets of 20, um, but if you can't do 20, just do as many as you can. Okay, let's go. Uh, uh. Now, if you're having trouble doing a regular push-up, you can start on the wall, just like this, like you're being frisked for the police for a crime you didn't do, and then you can work your way down, okay? Now, for those of you at home with a strength imbalance, you can do a different form of push-up until you build up the strength to do regular ones. You can start on your knees, okay? But remember, it's better to die on your feet than live on your knees. You start like this, and then you, okay? Just like that, okay? And eventually you'll build the strength to do one whole push up. All right? And thanks for watching the first episode of Ninja Fit. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and leave in the comments below what you'd like to see next. Also, buy some merch down below, or I'll kill you.
Today, on the first ever episode of Ninja Fit. Uh, f That's the thing about genetics. What works for one person might not, might, might. Uh, uh, uh. Give me a ooh.